we are. Another week, another children's sermon. I'm just reading my favorite book, the Jesus Storybook Bible, and I'm reading the story of God Makes a Way. This is part of the story of the Israelites escaping slavery in Egypt and moving to the promised land. And this is the second half of the story when they walk to the Red Sea and then they think that it's a dead end and that Pharaoh's going to get them because the chariots are coming. But, as the story says, God makes a way. So I'm reading you this story this week because... For the Family Bible Adventure on Sunday, we're going to be reading and telling a story, this part of the story. And on Sunday morning, the sermon and what we're going to be talking about during the big church service is this idea of how God can do things that are unexpected. How it might seem like one thing is about to happen, but then God does something different. So, I've got a magic trick that I want to show you that kind of tells a story about our life. We're going to show it to you here in a second. And I think you'll notice that something unexpected happens. It will seem like God's not there at all, and then all of a sudden, God makes a way. Let's look at the magic trick, and then we'll be back here in just a second. God makes a way. Moses and God's people escaped out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They didn't know the way, but God knew the way, and he showed them. I will bring you to a new home, a special land, God promised them. I will look after you. I am with you. God sent a big cloud for them to follow, a pillar of smoke stretching up to the sky. It moved in front of them as they walked and shaded them from the blazing heat of the day. And when it was time to rest, it stopped. All through the cold desert nights, it kept them warm, glowing like fire. God led his people through the desert to the edge of a great sea. They were just wondering how to cross it when suddenly they heard a terrible thundering and pounding. It sounded almost like horses' hooves. They shaded their eyes to look back and screamed. It was! Pharaoh and his army were coming to get them! Pharaoh had changed his mind again. Get my slaves back, he screeched, and charged out into the desert after them with six hundred of his fastest horsemen and every single chariot in Egypt. What were God's people going to do? In front of them was a big sea. It was so big there was no way around it. But there was no way through it. It was too deep. They didn't have any boats, so they couldn't sail across. And they couldn't swim across because it was too far and they would drown. And they couldn't turn turn back because Pharaoh was chasing them. They could see the flashing swords now, glinting in the baking sun and the dust clouds. And chariot after scary chariot surging towards them. So they did the only thing there was left to do. Panic! We're going to die, they shrieked. Don't be afraid, Moses said. But there's nothing we can do, they screamed. God knows you can't do anything, Moses said. God will do it for you. Trust him and watch. But there's no way out, they cried. God will make a way, Moses said. Another minute and it would have been over. But then the strangest thing happened. God made the pillar of smoke move. It moved behind his people and hid them from the Egyptians. Then God sent a strong east wind to blow all night long. It blew on the water of the big sea. It blew it to the left and it blew it to the right until it blew it into two towering walls of water. And there, right through the middle of the sea... A muddy pathway opened up, and God's people walked across on dry land. When the Egyptians tried to follow, the walls of water crashed back down on them and swallowed them up. God's people were safe. They danced and laughed and sang and thanked God. When there had been no way out, God made a way. Many years later, once again, God was going to make a way where there was no way. From the beginning, God's children had been running from him and hiding. God knew his children could never be happy without him, but they couldn't get back to him by themselves. They were lost, and they didn't know the way back. But God knew the way, and one day, God would show them. Okay, so I want to tell you a story. I've got three Uno cards right here. Count them. One, two, 
three. There we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you a story and it's about our life. In our life, we do a lot of activities, don't we? This is just the stuff that we do, stuff we gotta do every day. There's the fun things that we do. Oh, but then there's also oh, other activities. Our chores. Oh gosh. Make your bed. Do the dishes. Walk the dog. You know how it goes. And then there's of course the people in our life. The people that we love. Our friends and our family. You know how it goes. So our life has activities. As we said, activities, activities, and some people. Now here's the thing. One of the things that I believe is that God created us to have relationships with other people. Okay? And so we know that people are right up here and oh, they're going down to the bottom. And so we try and seek out relationships, don't we? And connection with other people. But we thought that the people would be there, but they're not, are they? Sometimes that's how it goes. And so we're thinking that this might be the place where we can make friends. All right, but they weren't there, so maybe the, the people are up here. This is where we're going to make friends. This is where we're going to build a relationship. Nope. Ugh. Nobody's there either. And so if there's no people here and there's no people there, oh, the people have to be right here, don't they? Wrong again. It can feel like our life is just all activities. We're just doing stuff all the time, but not making any real connections. But we know that people are really important. Like I said, our friends and our family, spending that time with one another really matters. And so we've got to find ways to be with the people who are here. And, oh, you know, we've got our friends at school too, and we need to take time to be with them. And you know what? There's friends at home, friends at school, there's friends at your church too. And that's important as well. And I know during this time, it can be really hard to... <laughs> be building our relationships and getting together with people. And so it can again feel like our life is just all activities all the time. Here's the thing though. Activities, right? The stuff that we do, people, the relationships that we have. Yeah, that's all important. Activities and the people. But what I want us to know is that God is a part of all of this. God's a part of our relationships. God's a part of the activities and the things that we do every day. God is present in our life, even when we can't see it. Even when we didn't realize that God was there all along, God is a part of whatever difficult moments you might be having, right? Maybe you're not getting together with people as much as you want. Maybe your life just feels like it's overrun with activities. I want you to know God is there. Hey, welcome back. Did you like that magic trick? I practiced really hard. I've got to be honest, the hardest part was figuring out how to show you that trick on the camera. Sorry that some of it was cut off, but you get the idea. How did God appear there? It looked like there was just an activities card and a people card. And I was telling you this whole long story about how our life is all about the things that we do and the people that we see, but God's a part of all of it. And just like we read in that Jesus storybook Bible story, God makes the way. The Israelites were at the Red Sea and felt like nothing was possible, that they were at a dead end. But God parted the sea and they were able to walk through and escape the chariots in Pharaoh. You see, the truth is, is that God surprises us all the time. And the unexpected happens in big, beautiful, wonderful ways. And so we always want to put our faith into practice, right? We, we read the stories of our faith, but then we live them out each and every day. And so your homework this week is to ask God to surprise you. Say that prayer every day when you wake up. Just wake up in the morning and say, surprise me, God. And then as a family, keep a list. Maybe you put it on the refrigerator and you write down all the times that God surprised you during this week. Let, let, let's, let's celebrate that. Let's see what you can come up with. All right, so that's your homework. Pray for God to surprise you and then keep a list as a family of all the surprising things God does in your life. I'm Pastor Nate. This has been the Children's Sermon for this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.